My name is Mark Zabrowski, and I'm here to help you become a better product innovator. If you're like me, you have a passion for innovation, a passion for product design, product development. And if you're also like me, you probably spend a lot of time searching for new insights, new methods, anything to help you become a better product innovator. Well, that's why I'm here today, so stick around. You know, I've spent over 30 years creating new products as a marketer, as an innovation leader, and as an R&D team leader. And in that time, I've always tried to express my knowledge, share my knowledge with others as a public speaker, as an adjunct college professor, and more recently in writing my book on product innovation. Well, today, I'm here to extend my reach of knowledge to people like you with what I can do to help you become a better product innovator. Every episode in my series focuses on one aspect to the product innovation function, from idea generation all the way through product launches. And every episode provides insights, guidance, methods, everything that you can use and put into practice today to improve your skills in product innovation. In this particular episode, I focus on the role of the business definition. You know, to me, the business definition is a topic that is just not covered enough. But Companies like a Netflix and Amazon, they already understand this. They're always reviewing their business definition with the goal of expanding their future prospects from innovation. That's what I want you to do here today. You know, if you define your business too narrowly, someday you could be disrupted by an outside company that disrupts the entire landscape. But there is hope. If you define your business in a broader fashion, as we're hoping you learn from this episode, someday you can become that disruptor. In this episode, I include all the factors of a business definition. I show you how to review each of the factors, how to possibly adjust them as necessary to become more aligned with your business goals so that you will ensure that you have a broad view on the world for your future innovation. So take a look at this episode. I think you will learn from it. I think you'll get excited and inspired to go back to your office today, reviewing your business definition with the hope of determining where you can make it better for your business future. So watch learn and get back to me with your comments. I want to hear from you. Thank you and get excited. This episode is about how to model your business definition for success in a world of disruptive innovations. So let's start with some questions. Is your business prepared for outside disruptors? Are you prepared to be that disruptor? Well, the answers are in your business definition. What is a business definition? A business definition is like a camera lens looking outward. What does it see? A regular lens sees the future picture straight ahead. A wide angle lens, on the other hand, sees the broader picture. How we define our business is vital to our future growth potential. If we define it through a narrow lens, we'll search for growth in what we see straight ahead. But if we define it with a wide-angle lens, then we'll be searching beyond our current focus. So let's start with a quiz. Which business definitions do you think offer the biggest growth potential? We provide movie rentals for via retail. We provide access to movies. We provide liquids that clean surfaces or we provide products that clean surfaces. We provide athletic shoes or we provide products to enhance athletic performance. Well, Blockbuster saw itself as a movie rental retailer. Netflix, on the other hand, was a disruptor by seeing itself more broadly as movie access by any means. 
One of P&G businesses was defined as liquid surface cleaners, like their Mr. Clean product. P&G broadened its surface cleaners business definition to all surface cleaners, introducing products like Swiffer. Nike started its business selling athletic shoes. Then Nike expanded its business definition to enhancing athletic performance. As in these examples, a business definition will determine the scope of the business for today and tomorrow. My goal is to help you define your business for optimal innovation growth, to be prepared for outside disruptors, or better, to become one of those disruptors yourself. In this lecture, I explain the key factors to the business definition. I reveal how a business definition actually sets the guideposts to your growth prospects from product innovation. I'll offer real and hypothetical examples and provide guidelines for optimizing your business definition. There are threats and opportunities inherent in a business definition. When we define our business by the narrow vision of our current products or technologies or methods, we restrain our growth prospects. And we will not be the ones who search for innovations that might disrupt our comfort zone. We will miss the emerging opportunities. And worse, we won't see emerging threats from others who are embracing disruptive technologies or methods. But there is also an opportunity side to a business definition. Any business can dramatically alter its growth prospects by broadening just one of the factors. Like with Netflix, Broadening just one factor was enough to drive significant growth potential. If you are going to become a better product innovator, you need to understand the role of your business definition and how to define your business to optimize your growth potential from innovation. Every business is defined by five factors. What needs do we satisfy? What product or service do we provide? Who are the consumers we serve? How do we distribute our product or service? And how shall we manufacture our product? Your business definition should be like a wide angle lens, looking at your future, seeing well outside your current focus. Let's look at some hypothetical examples. Coppertone. Coppertone is a marketer of OTC sunscreen liquids and sprays applied to the skin and sold to consumers at retail and online venues. So, how could Coppertone innovate with an expanded business definition? Okay, so starting where Coppertone is today, in this hypothetical world of a broader business definition, we start with OTC sun protection products. You'll notice that what we eliminated was the definition that includes just sprays and liquids. And again, in my hypothetical vision, we see that Coppertone may someday invent an ingestible sunscreen pill, something they would never have looked at with their current business definition. Expanding further, we eliminate OTC from their definition and look at sun protection products. Here again, in my hypothetical world, we someday have a wand that emits sun protective radio waves onto the skin. And further broadening their business definition, now we include sun protection products and services. Here, I invent the idea of a stick-on skin patch that provides a service, an alert, to us when our exposure to the sun reaches its limit. Now, none of these may be possible today, but if Coppertone maintains a narrow business definition, it will be the loser to any of these emerging innovations. Let's look at another hypothetical example, Generac. 
Generac is a marketer of diesel or natural gas powered energy generators for consumers, business, and institutional markets with stationary and portable units for emergency and on-demand use. All right, so let's look. How could a Generac innovate with an expanded business definition? So again, starting where they are today, we broaden their definition to eliminate the reliance on diesel or natural gas in their business definition, and their new business definition is broader, defined as energy generators. And with this, in my hypothetical world, I have them inventing portable solar-powered generators, something, again, they would never pursue with their current business definition. Expanding another step further, something very bold, energy generators for disaster relief. Now we're looking at large-scale energy generators, large mobile trucks, boats, planes for rapid deployment into towns and cities working with agencies like AFEMA. And further, in, a, in an expansion of their business definition, personal portable energy supply. And here I look at the idea of wearable solar and battery powered energy supply for mobile devices. Now, in this case, with Generac, all of these may in fact be possible today for Generac if it broadens its business definition. Any business could benefit from a review and possible adjustment to their business definition. For defensive reasons, no business is safe today from possible outside disruptors. This review will keep their eyes open to where the disruptors may come from. And, of course, for offensive reasons, any such review for any business can broaden their search for innovation opportunities. The goal is to ensure that your business definition is optimized for your innovation growth objectives, to be prepared for the possible disruptors, or better yet, possibly to become one. Okay, so how do you determine the optimal definition for your business? First, write down your current business definition describing each of the factors as it is today. We have an example here of a wet wipes marketer. We provide wet wipes that offer readily available means to clean and disinfect surfaces for the consumer, industrial, and institutional markets. We manufacture our wipes in our own factories. Next, establish your innovation objectives. That all starts with your business goals. Then, establish your product innovation objectives from modest or minimal to disruptive that may be appropriate to your business goals. Review each business definition to determine if it is aligned with your new innovation objectives. Adjust your business definition. Start by reviewing each factor to determine if and how it could be adjusted to align with your new innovation objectives. Any expansion would be a strategic move, and you must remember that strategic moves cost money. So, start by looking at the factor that reflects the lowest strategic move and, up, look, and move up from there. The lowest strategic move to broaden your business is to offer new products to the same consumer. Examples. Best Buy expanded their product line definition to include the Geek Squad at-home tech support services. In 1975, McDonald's expanded their business as a hamburger provider to a breakfast provider provider, where it now represents over 20% of its total business. And Netflix again broadened their, diff, their business from movie access to movie provider. Next in strategic moves is a redefinition of consumers served and needs satisfied. 
Here we have some examples with Arm & Hammer dramatically broaden their business from baking soda for bakers to a marketer of freshening products for all consumers. A huge and dramatic broadening of their definition that really had tremendous success for Arm & Hammer. Apple expanded its business as a maker of computers for home and business users to a provider of iPod, music access for music lovers. And Sotheby's, another example, was an art auction house that expanded to Sotheby's real estate sales. Next, in Strategic Moves, is a redefinition of your methods of distribution. Some examples. The first ATM was a huge innovation that redefined how banking services were quote, distributed from telewindows to 24-7 street machines. Amazon and Netflix both redefined the method of distributing their products to consumers. And we all love the pizza delivery industry. The entire industry was based on delivery versus picking up or eating in their stores. And finally, probably the biggest strategic moves come from a redefinition of your manufacturing methods. Example, IKEA moved its furniture assembly from its factories to the consumer's home with the do-it-yourself ready-to-assemble furniture. Big move for IKEA. Dell changed the way consumers bought mass-produced computers at retail to buying direct from the manufacturer via customized manufacturing. And both Uber and Airbnb disrupted their industries by changing how vehicles and beds were manufactured. I put that in quotes because clearly they don't manufacture the beds, but they've created an alternate way of making the beds and cars available to consumers. Now back to our wet wipes marketer. Our wet wipes marketer decided to make a bold change to their business definition regarding products and benefits. Their revised definition is, we provide wipes that offer readily available means to diagnose conditions of surface air and exposures to the elements for consumers, industrials, and institutional markets, and they continue to manufacture their wipes in their own factories. So they started as a wet wipes manufacturer marketer that provided cleaning and disinfecting surfaces. Their redefinition goes well beyond that to wipes for diagnostic purposes and their new product line may someday include diagnostic wipes for diagnosing germs, airborne allergens, bad breath, radon and others as exposed, as exposed to the environment. By redefining its business, our wipes marketer has opened up completely new approach to product innovation for new products, users, and customers. Now it's your turn. Is your business defined for success in this world of disruptive innovations? I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope you learned from it. And I also hope that you'll go back to your place of business today and look at your business definition, look at what you can do to adjust it, and hopefully come away with an expanded view of the future of your business. I really enjoyed this episode. I hope you did too. And I look forward to seeing you again in some of my other episodes. Thank you.